It's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com. It's early July 2024, and it's time for another garden tour brought to you by my sponsor, Fessy Seeds. Let's go have a look around. All right, we've got a beautiful sunrise going on here, Nova Scotia, Canada, and uh, just entering the garden. Potatoes are fully grown, and they finished flowering. And I should have picked off the flowers, but I didn't. It's a good idea. I just I got too much going on here, so sometimes I don't get around to that. You'll still get good potatoes if you don't pick off the flowers. And they'll be ready in about a month or so. Uh, coming to the garden. Zucchini, doing great. Uh, to me, I can always tell a good season when I get zucchini in July. You can see that the fruits are already forming, and it's early July. So it's going to be, this is a good growing season <laughs> right now. And I didn't plant these early. I didn't start these indoors. I just direct seeded these right in the ground. And you can see how big and healthy they are, right? They're doing great. All right, over here we got uh, potatoes doing good. These ones, the flowers are just, just forming up. Uh, parsnips, these have been thinned and weeded. For the most part <laughs> so you can see they're big and healthy and strong you got a thin parsnips if you want good parsnips here i got the potatoes and peas peas are in full swing harvesting a bowl every two days and of course the potatoes i planted a little bit later on are doing great on either side uh, here i got garlic uh close to maturity it's gonna you know like they say when you've got four yellow stalks or four yellow leaves and they're ready to be harvested. These are almost there. I usually harvest garlic in early August, and these look like they're on schedule for that. Uh, these are climbing beans with some greens on either side. The greens seem to have bolted. I think they're a little bit heat stressed when I planted them. Anyway, these beans are just already finding their way up the trellis. I guess the highest ones are about four feet high already. If you watch that video where I moved beets, you can see that the beets I moved are just about the same height as the beets that I didn't move. <laughs> so they've caught up. And these ones are nicely well spaced. So they're growing really well, really healthy. And I've got a good mulch down as well, right? Not beets, sorry. <laughs> these look like beets, but they're Swiss chard. <laughs> okay. And uh, over here, I got dill and cucumbers. I've been away. I had to go to a wedding out of Providence. Um, so the, these have grown a lot. You can see this one, it's actually about two feet long. It needs to be trained up this trellis. That's something I need to do today. Uh, perhaps I'll do a video if the flies aren't too bad. Anyway, the plan for this garden is to have dill on the one side and parsley on the other side. But, geez, I planted a lot of parsley here and it never really came in. I don't know what went wrong. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. I really like having parsley in the garden for pasta. And it's, uh, I mean, it's July. It's still not too late to get that going, but yeah, that's, that's definitely a problem I'm going to solve this week if I'm going to solve it at all. And over here, I've got the tomatoes that I started indoors uh, back in April. And they're flowering out, some of them anyway. And they're about the right size to start uh, staking, trellising. You know, if I was, <laughs> some of these I should have put the cage, I can still get a cage over these if I'm careful. Uh, but, you know, yeah, they're about just over two feet high now, and uh, they're ready. Um, you know, they need, these are not uh, bush variety. These are indeterminate, indeterminate. There's determinate, indeterminate, indeterminate. Just keep going up and up and up. That's what these are, so they need to be staked or caged or something, right? And finally, at the end of this row, I got these um, pumpkins growing here. I can just tell by the look of these, they look a little bit not green enough these gonna need some sort of these need a dose of nitrogen however i can get it to them uh yeah the plan is for these to be trained out this way but yeah they look a little bit nitrogen starved so uh i didn't do much with the soil underneath this there's cardboard over this hole this this kind of this area of the garden's constantly being inundated with weeds from the forest so i cardboarded the whole thing and put wood chips on top of the cardboard so I wouldn't say the cardboard or the wood chips are necessarily uh, robbing the soil of nitrogen. I mean, look at this, uh, let this parsnip go to seed. There's a lot of insects that enjoy the flowers of the parsnip. Some of them are beneficial. So also aphids like them, which is not good, but actually I don't see a problem here with these. 
Uh, I don't see aphids anywhere in my garden this year so far. But anyway, there's certain flies and stuff that like like these seeds, and they can be good for your garden. So I like to let a couple of parsnips go to seed. I also have a kale over here going to seed because uh, I'm running out of kale seeds. It's my own my own wild variety of kale that I grow. I'll show you that in a little bit. And I've got this bloody bindweed growing up. There. Not good for anything. Anyway, those are doing great. Uh, rhubarb, we've had lots of harvest of the rhubarb. Uh, and my mom stayed for a few days with my kids. And, <laughs> and so it's not looking perfectly pretty because they harvest this on to make rhubarb crisp because my kids like it. Uh, going up here, we got uh, beets doing really good. I've had these uh, weeded and thinned. Uh, I've been putting my kids to work. They're uh, 13 and 15, so they're actually quite helpful in the garden this year. Um, so the bigger ones were original beans, and these smaller ones were thinned and moved, right? I pulled, uh, you know, we pulled all this. Was, this was like, um, you know, over a foot high with weeds, and you could barely even see the beets. And it was their job to meticulously separate the weeds from the beets. Once that was done, I thinned the ones that were there, and this whole end of the garden here, the, uh, I guess there was more weeds or something. More sun, more weeds, right? <laughs> so uh, anyway, we've uh, sorted it all out. In about a month, this will probably look really good. We'll see. I mean, right now it looks good, but it's going to look a lot better. I'm hoping it looks like this <laughs> in about a month. Over here, I've got a carrot garden. A bit of a disaster. Just like the beets, I let this go really, really. I just kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off, putting off weeding them. And so uh, my kids took care of that. Uh, what I plan to do is the carrots that are over there on that side. This is an eight foot wide garden. Carrots that are on that side, I'm going to carefully move them and space them all out on this side because this is roughly the area of a, a four by eight garden so i'm going to commit this day this part of the garden to carrots get a good mulch in there that sort of thing and over here i'm going to plant some uh, yellow beans okay uh this is lettuce that i moved from another part of the garden you can see i got bags here because i plan to put these down to control weeds and stuff like that the scissors <laughs> right there um this is lettuce that I moved from another part of the garden. It's grown really well, but as you can see, it's wanting to bolt. So we've been using a lot of it. And you can see here's one that's really starting to bolt, right? At those different stages, right? It starts by, you know, now let's see if I can find one. It starts by being open. These are almost all going to bolt. But, you know, the, the whole thing starts being kind of open. And then it starts closing up like this. Okay. And then that starts growing. And eventually it produces a flower. And when all this starts, stuff starts to happen, the lettuce doesn't really taste that good anymore. And it's only useful as a cooked green, which is how we eat it. But on the bright side, a cooked green, you can eat a lot. So for the four of us, as a cooked green, I could cook maybe like four of these heads for one meal because it really shrinks down. Everybody still gets their lettuce and they still get some vitamins and nutrition. Um, it's not, not, not the same as raw, but still good. So that's what's going on here. This is all, I got some transplants started in my driveway for different kinds of greens. I plan to put them here once all this lettuce is out of the way. Down the main row of the garden where the rock border beds, of course, I got the zucchini here. This was a lettuce garden. This is the one I used to populate the lettuce garden I showed earlier. Most of that lettuce is out and I've put peppers in here. Okay, that was weeks and weeks ago. And they're, they're not doing great, but they're growing. <laughs> There's a lot of summer left. So hopefully, you know, we'll just see where things go. But they seem, they, for whatever reason, they did not like being put out here and they took a long time. You see, this is one here is uh, a little bit bigger. But, uh, yeah, I'm optimistic. It'll be okay. It'll be fine. We'll see what happens. This is a different variety of pepper than I would normally plant. This is a Carmen variety. Uh, a good friend of mine said it's fantastic, where he lives anyway. So we'll see how that goes. I got winter squash here. They're, they're well behind the zucchini. But that's okay. I find uh, winter squash tend to do a lot of growing in September. So the fact that they're a bit behind isn't a big deal. They'll be fine. Uh, this little experiment here, someone noticed this as I was waving the camera around. A friend of mine I work with uh, had 
you know, started cucumber transplants indoors against my advice and uh, and planted them out and they, you know, they look at this person's cucumbers are terrible. <laughs> so around the beginning of July, I filled this pot with potting soil and stuck two seeds in the pot and I'm going to give it to her this weekend. <laughs> but, uh, just to prove that it's, it's you know, J beginning of July isn't too late to plant cucumbers, right? These will probably not be harvestable till September, as opposed to uh, my cucumbers over there, which will probably start coming in early August. Okay, these will be a bit behind, but they'll still work. And it might even be the case that two cucumbers is too many for a pot this size. Right? It's about a foot, uh, foot deep, but... Um, Anyway, I'm gonna let two go there, and uh, we'll see. Anyway, that's what that's all about. I don't, I don't need these. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's the winter squash. Uh, kale still needs to be thin. My son weeded it, and uh, you can see it's too thick. It's getting eaten alive by slugs and stuff. Right? It's just too easy for them to hide in there, that sort of thing. And I haven't treated it with anything, <laughs> right? And it doesn't matter. I got so many greens. In the garden, I don't not not after kale right now, right? This is more of a I like eating and harvesting this in the fall, uh, but these need to be thinned and mulched, right? And by virtue of mulching them, usually I like to use a grass clipping mulch on kale in early summer, and that seems to really um, just almost like fertilize them, right? Gets them going really good, so. They're doing fine, they just need to be thinned. Desperately need to be thinned. Uh, strawberries, had a great year with strawberries. They're all done producing now. And I was gonna, I thought this was the last year for this, these particular strawberries, but they produce so well, I'm gonna give them another year. Over here, I got uh, Kalaloo and mustard greens. Mustard greens are being eaten alive by pests, but they're big and healthy. And the Kalaloo is completely pest free. And some of them are going to flower, which I've let them do. Uh, but we've been eating this and I really like it and they're so big and healthy. Uh, great success at the Kalaloo this year. This will definitely be a regular fixture in my garden. Uh, raspberries. For the first year ever, it looks like I'm going to get a decent haul of raspberries as you can see. Now we had a bit of a windstorm and some of these broke off. And I think in the future, I think what happened is that the wind was blowing them around. They were rubbing against this fence. I put fencing around these because rabbits would get into the garden and just cut them off. And so I gave them, like, I got a, I got a fence surrounding the garden, but this is like a secondary fence. And it seemed to allow them to grow. Um, but they rub against the fence. You can see this one here. It's all weighted down. It's leaning against the fence. So I think I need to stake them for next year. I think they'll do a lot better. Um, but anyway, they're doing good right this is going to be my first year ever i can make raspberry jam out of the garden and the solution was instead of having the raspberries against the edge of the garden seemed like a good spot because you know they could you know didn't have to worry about shade and stuff like that um but having them against the edge of the garden just was too much of a temptation for uh the forest animals rabbits in particular <laughs> they would just the really young ones would find their way through the fence somewhere and come in and get at them Maybe they can smell them, I don't know. Um, so, raspberries looking good for this year. Uh, I got a few sun chokes here. I wanted to take them out of this part of the garden, but I forgot about it. <laughs> so, for another year, they're going to be here. I don't like them in, the, in this part of the garden because they they just cast a lot of shade. But, man, they're easy to grow. <laughs> you want to look successful, plant some sun chokes. You will look successful as a gardener. Over here, we got uh, asparagus garden, a little bit sparse this is still a work in progress some of these need to be moved and spaced out and that sort of thing um, but we're getting there with the asparagus <laughs> we're getting there on the garlic garden doing good this is all onions now this was a bed where i planted winter squash last year and they grew very poorly and my hypothesis was that the soil was either devoid of nutrients or too acidic so uh, i addressed both problems not knowing which i never got a soil test <laughs> i put some uh, the entire garden the entire garden i have to say uh, last year i didn't have the best garden ever it was still good but it wasn't like what i was hoping for and i just thought i mean i haven't done anything with my soil for years right i've just been mulching it and there are nutrients in mulch but the mulches i use are not nutrient rich 
with the exception of grass clippings, but I don't grass clipping everything. Right? I tend to use a lot of leaves, which have nutrients, but they're not you know, loaded with nitrogen or anything like that. So almost every bed in the garden has been treated with about an inch of manure. I bought manure last fall, and that was a project getting it out. So everything's had manure in it, and it has had a great effect, right? So, and, and I'm not going to do that every year. It's a lot of work, but I think if you do that, probably doing that every three years is good. I mean, lots of garden books will say to do it every year or every other year, but if you're keeping, I don't think they, they account for the, uh, the amount of nutrients that uh, are brought to the soil by keeping it mulched. So I think if you're regularly mulching your garden and using something like leaves anyway, which is primarily what I use, um, then an application of manure, maybe, and I think this was just horse manure, but every three or four years is probably going to have a really positive effect on your, your production. I mean, look how good this all looks, right? Oh, okay, so that's what I did here. I did manure and lime. Okay, I treated it with uh, pelletized lime. And these onions look healthy. They look good, <laughs> right? Can't complain about this. Of course, mulch with leaves, but dead easy garden, you know. Just plug the, these were onion sets, the st uh, Sturian, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, um, from Vessies. Just stick them in the ground. Cover with, uh, cover with about three inches of leaves, walk away. That's it. <laughs> I haven't done a thing here. <laughs> uh, these, another garden here where I believed the soil had a terrible uh, acidity problem. I did not treat this with lime. I planted potatoes, which like acidic soil. They look kind of lousy right now, but a month ago they looked great. Um, they look lousy because they're done, right? Their plants have produced their, their potatoes, right? And it's time... To when you start seeing them yellow like this, you can wait. Um, the longer you wait, the greater your risk of potatoes being attacked by various things. If you're, if you're lucky, you don't have anything that attacks potatoes in your soil, and you can just leave them in and take them as you need them. Uh, if you're unlucky, uh, and you leave them in the ground, they'll get chewed on by voles. Uh, you know, various insects will make tiny holes in them, and then other insects, like slugs, will actually start uh, working on that. And... Uh, you know, and there's all kinds of nasty things that can get in potatoes if you leave them too long. So um, these were my first, this is the first bed I planted. I always plant an early bed, like middle April, which is a bit early for potatoes. But the red Norland, which is what I planted here, which is sold by Bessie Seeds. Um, it seems to be fine with being planted a little bit early. It's kind of a tougher potato. Um, probably why they call it Norland, Northland. And uh, these are always ready early. These are a fantastic potato for things like potato salad and roasting. They're not much of a mashed, they're not very good for mashed potatoes in my opinion. They're not, they're not a starchy potato. They're a waxy potato. Um, but they're good for like, you know, when you roast the potatoes and you have that with your shish kebabs. Or you want a nice um, potato salad. They're perfect for that. So it's time to start getting those out of the ground. Uh, I got a nice onion bed here. They're doing great. These are spring onions. It's the first year I've ever tried planting spring onions. And I've been using them regularly. These are great because these aren't ready yet, right? And what I normally do is just whenever I need onion, I, mean, I buy onions, but also rob greens from my onions. You know, I'll take a green here, a green there. But that's not ideal, right? The greens are what gather the energy to, to create the actual onion bulb. So better off having a bed of green onions. And when you need onion, you got them, right? We do a lot of stir fries and stuff like that. So these will all get used and they grow, you know, like they're just meant to be grown for the greens. So they're going to be fine. Uh, more garlic here. This garlic is not as big and thick and strong as the other two beds of garlic. So I'm inclined to think the soil here isn't as good and it needs a little bit of enhancement. These are all things you just take notice of as your garden's coming in. Because uh, you're planting the same crops, similar crops in different places. This gets lots of sun. So if it's getting the same much sun, same amount of sun as another bed, and I planted the same variety of garlic, then it's got to be the soil, right? Because everything else with this bed has been the same. Here I got a new strawberry bed. You can see the paper that I mulched it with. If you watch that video, it's still holding up just fine, right? Same with this. And that, it'll all break down eventually, but it's fine for now. So I haven't needed to start mulching it. Um, these are still making some runners just did a video on strawberries but when you got new strawberries they're going to want to make babies like this you know if i had a friend and i could get a hold of that person today 
um, they could stick this in the ground and this would become a strawberry plant right but I don't if you want your strawberries to be big and healthy and strong you nip those off All right so the strawberry is focused on just becoming a big plant and not focused on colonizing the entire bed <laughs> right that way all your strawberries are the same stage of maturity right um, and over here for the first time ever really this uh, bed of lingonberries aka partridge berries I'm not getting a lot but I am getting some berries I don't know why this one has a lot of berries and all the other ones don't I guess they do have some right but they're not clustered up as well but anyway these are healthy and they're looking good so we'll have to see if I get any more harvest I don't have enough for making jam unfortunately I need a good bowl but uh, anyway this is like year I think five with these lingonberries and I mean as plants they're doing fine but they're not fruiting up as much as I'd like um, I'm just inclined to wait <laughs> you know for whatever reason that one is it's all the same soil so I don't know what's going on the uh, grapes that I moved uh, last year well actually the fall before last year they have recovered they're starting to set some fruit right this plant isn't anywhere near the size it was when uh, I moved it you know it's like a tiny fraction of that but I'm starting the process of training it to this new trellis and I think in a year or two it's gonna look pretty pretty stately pretty impressive um, all my blueberries are coming in as you can see right despite the fact that I've got that witch's broom disease I mean this is a good harvest nothing to complain about right all the plants have fruit and I've definitely got enough berries for lots of tasty treats <laughs> my apple tree is looking healthy uh, it, none of the flowers got pollinated this year because I don't have another mature apple tree of a different variety I just not, apple trees are not self-pollinating unless they've got other varieties grafted onto them you need two different varieties of apples for an apple tree to be pollinated so this one's just getting bigger and stronger you know just just growing for a year same deal for my pear tree um, although I don't even know if this actually set out flowers this year I do have another pear tree on the property um, it's outside the garden enclosure but that one isn't mature enough to make flowers so this one's not getting pollinated but the tree looks good right and again this was started from a, a whip right just a little you know I ordered this from Bessie's and it's got like a little stick you know about a foot and a half long stick with some dry roots hanging off the end and you stick it in the ground same with that one right that was just four I think four years ago right look how big it is now and this was had a lot of you know when I moved this tree I, I really beat the hell out of it so you can see there's a whole piece that was cut off down there right just remove that part of the tree because when I repositioned and it moved it up here it just wasn't uh, standing right let's put it that way there was too much tree <laughs> so I removed a big piece of it uh, this one here is uh, another variety of apple um, and it's not flowering yet it didn't flower this year right I expect next year it will have enough size that it will flower um, but if you look at this tree we've got a bit of a problem we got this here's stock and we've got this huge one coming off this has to be you don't want you've got your your main trunk and then you've got branches off a tree you don't want a branch to be half the diameter of your trunk right this will this can just break off and really damage the tree so at some point I'm gonna have to prune this off so that this part of the tree can become the central leader right the trunk um, no big deal but I decided to leave leave this on for the summer so the leaves can gather energy and help the roots mature right because really all plants and in a lot of senses the root is the plant <laughs> right everything above is where the fruit and the energy gets you know everything above the ground is where the energy gets gathered and where the fruit is set but so much of the business end of the plant is in the roots Right, all of these leaves are sending energy down to the roots, maturing this plant. So it doesn't make sense. But maybe before the winter, 
maybe late fall or something like that before we start getting freezes and snows and ice and all that sort of stuff it weights branches down and breaks trees right and they, even though you don't typically uh, prune a tree what I'll do is in the fall uh, when the leaves are starting to fall I'll cut it off around here okay so there's no weight and then in the spring I'll, re I'll make a nice neat cut down here right that's what I'm gonna do Housecat berries are done producing. Uh, this lovage is basically done. If I was really on the ball, I would have harvested these flowers a few weeks ago when they were good, but now they're all nasty. <laughs> you can use the flowers like a like an anise seed for sausages or various dishes, pasta dishes or whatever. But you have to harvest them before they start getting all brown and you know buggy and stuff like that. Yeah, the timing has to be perfect. They all have to look like this, right? A nice dry day, and you get them and hang them upside down, and you can save them. But I didn't didn't do that, so uh, my <laughs> my free celery, because the lovage is basically like a celery substitute. Uh, substitute my free celery time is up. Uh, all this Saskap is done, and that Saskatoon that was so devastated by whatever got in here it hasn't had any new damage and it's recovering it's sending out new foliage right and it's recovering from being just completely stripped of its leaves and stripped of its fruit and everything right something got in here and just took it out uh broke all the branches i don't really know exactly what happened uh but anyway that's that's where it is uh this here garden at the base right so i've got my compost set up here i should do a video talking about that i keep putting that off uh, this is working really good. Um, I've decided to make this kind of like a perennial garden, although I do have some potatoes this year. Um, so I'm still playing around with ideas here, but uh, I've got Saskatoon sort of towards the back. And then here I've got just different herbs, thyme. This is a kind of curry leaf. Um, this is Malabar spinach getting eaten alive by slugs. I've never grown Malabar spinach before. I haven't treated this with anything. I'm just sort of letting it go but it's supposed to be a climbing spinach uh, but it really it's grown since i planted it well over a month ago but it's not growing like crazy anyway the plan is to train it up get some height There's some potatoes here just for the sake of what the heck right and here i got um, a combination of perennial herbs right oregano and this uh, bloody duck and at the back i've got saskatoon saskatoon and this uh, Arona Viking berry in the pond. We got very happy, thriving population of goldfish. Probably, you know, this this year it's doing really, really well. I don't know if you can see. There's one just past the duck. If I get too close, it'll probably run away. There's another one coming close to the surface. If I move, my goldfish are incredibly skittish. If I bring the camera up very slowly. Maybe you can see them feeding around the edge there. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, the goldfish in this pond are doing great. Um, last year I had the pond kind of get too much nutrients and it foamed up. That's around this time of the summer. I can't remember exactly when it was, but it was the time of summer when it was hot. Uh, this year I, mean, I got a good fountain going here where it takes water out of the center of the garden. And... Uh, Water comes out here, I like get a little tube, and it just trickles down and gets a little bit oxygenated over. And I got it running over pebbles and stuff like that. It goes back in and it's it's working um, just fine. Um, but I think the another big difference this year with the pond, even though it's all cloudy and muddy, <laughs> it's got a muddy bottom and the goldfish are moving around. They stir it all up, so it just will not, there's nothing I can do. <laughs> the bottom needs to get carpeted with vegetation to hold that mud and silt and stuff in place um but it's, you know, every time it rains i get a new you know like the, the water comes down out of this hill and it brings clay with it so i'm always getting a new dose of clay with every rain it just never clears right <laughs> so it's always a bit muddy the goldfish don't seem to care i don't know if you can see them over there feeding They're always feeding along the edge a big difference this year is i got way more aquatic plants just different things i brought in from ditches in the neighborhood that have taken up 
um, you know, they just, they took, they took. So those can take up the excess nutrient in the water. I also have planted everywhere this uh, watercress that I just got at a uh, grocery store in my neighborhood. You can see their roots are all over the place, right? These are just the roots. Various algaes will form on the roots and they just kind of float and they, I mean, I just planted them around the edges, just a few sprigs and they've spread out all over the bed, the, um, the pond. And so what are they doing? They're casting shade, keeping the water cool. They're all, the, the goldfish, when I'm not around scaring them, they like to peck at the roots. I don't think they're eating the roots. I think they're eating whatever they're finding on the roots, right? So these roots almost act like a, a net that captures food for the fish. And I've got footage of them just uh, in and around there, just having a great time. I mean, in the footage, I had to put a little bit of bread <laughs> just to get them to come in. But if you're, you know, because I didn't want to wait too long. But if, if you stand really still and wait a long, long time, and it's a nice sunny day, you can see them pecking in around the roots over there, right, and over there. Oh, <laughs> just scared one over there. So, I mean, just like last year, I got frogs living in here, and I got goldfish living in here. Um, but this year I've got a lot of the goldfish must have laid eggs and had young because I got many different sizes and colors of goldfish in the pond, which I did not have uh, last year. So I noticed this spring a few, there's one over there. There's one that's very, oh, it's right away there, very brave and the others are very skittish. <laughs> I guess he's not that brave. Um, but anyway, they, I mean, you know, for whatever reason, this has just got the right conditions. And I think I've had at least two waves of eggs being laid and goldfish being created. Which means I probably have too much goldfish in this small space, because I know I have well over a dozen here now, right? And about 10 or 11 of them are big, like almost the, you know, I don't know, six inches long, that sort of thing, right? They're getting big, which means that I need... Uh, another goldfish pond <laughs> right or a friend that needs goldfish anyway the goldfish are doing great and i think just the, the pond being another year of maturity lots of aquatic vegetation setting up shop in the pond and the addition of the watercress which is just spreading out and going everywhere and taking up nutrients right and so that prevents the water from becoming uh toxic and that sort of thing you can see there's two goldfish right around the edge there you see them in there three actually oh now they're going back down i just love watching the goldfish anyway this year 2024 i'm having a great garden all the work i put in the previous year moving everything reorganizing reorienting it's all I, mean, I had a good garden last year but this is the year where it's all come together and it's all worthwhile <laughs> Of course, your reward is that you've got more work to do. You got more garden, more success means more work, right? But yeah, no, it's it's. I'm really enjoying uh, the results this year, and uh, you know, the only hiccup I had this year is those carrots. That's that's a good year. You know, only one thing that didn't do. That I only have one thing that isn't uh, like perfect, <laughs> right? The uh, peppers, I guess, they're not so great yet, but it's it's early days, right? We got. Uh, July and August to go. Peppers like heat, so uh, uh, we'll see where they go uh, in a month. But very, very happy with the garden. I really only had one thing that isn't to my satisfaction with those carrots, and I'm still going to get carrots, and they're still going to be fine. And the fact that the entire bed isn't full of carrots just gives me an excuse to plant something else. I get some yellow beans in there, make some mustard beans in the fall. Who doesn't like that? So, hope you found this interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. Check out my weekly column at MaritimeGardening.substack.com. And of course, keep watching my videos on YouTube. And until next time, get out there. Get at it. Have fun in your garden. Thanks a lot. <laughs>